Hey guys, what's up? It's Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I want to talk to you today about wrestling comedy moments. It's kind of a hit and miss affair really, isn't it? Often leaving us cringing rather than creased up with laughter. Yet sometimes, sometimes, no matter how terrible the thing that we're watching is, it will still draw a laugh. Jim Cornette did famously once say, funny don't draw money, but these definitely drew smiles. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com and these are seven wrestling comedy moments that you felt totally guilty for laughing at. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, die. Number seven, big punishment for the little guy. To begin with, we, as in humanity, are kind of trash, really, aren't we? W we are kind of trash. Yeah, we are. We are kind of trash. I mean, we'd much rather point and laugh at somebody falling over than actually go and help them. Sometimes, though, you do just have to kind of laugh to get over the situation, it being so abhorrently strange or shocking. Case in point, Jeff Jarrett when he met Beetlejuice. Now, Beetlejuice is an entertainer who was diagnosed with dwarfism and microcephaly. So anyone picking a fight with him would automatically be considered a colossal dickhead. Hello, Jeff Jarrett and his guitar, which he used to smash him, not just, just over the head, in the back of the head and sent him flying down a corridor. Like an empty water bottle. <laughs> but at the same time, you had to find it quite funny because you just didn't see it coming. You didn't think that he would go through with it. The camera pans back and he raises his guitar and you think, no, definitely not Jeff, not this guy. But there he goes. It was definitely something. Number six, R.I.P. Mae Young. Beating up old women in real life is not funny. It's not, is it? It's not funny. I mean, I don't want to have to picture the scene of one of your nans getting her fixer dent loosened by some guys. That's your mum's job. That's my one per list. But seriously though, it's not funny. In the WWE though, it's actually comedy gold. Case in point, Mae Young shoving her crotch into Bubba Ray's face before he power bombed her off the stage onto some tables. A regular bump would have been bad enough to this octogenarian, octogenarian, she's not an octopus, but an octogenarian, you know what I'm saying, an elderly person, but here, it was so ridiculous that you couldn't help but piss yourself. Well, that wasn't until you saw the look on his face. Get some help, mate. Number five, Michael Cole decimates Caitlyn and Maxine. Now, we rag on Michael Cole here quite a lot, mainly because his pre-programmed lines of THE BIG DOG and IT'S BOSS TIME are usually delivered with all the passion of a funeral march, but there are times in which he can shed this weird cocoon that Vince has wrapped around him with his sticky silk, and that should be quite a laugh. I mean, I totally pissed myself when he shits all over NXT Season 3, and more specifically, a match between Caitlyn and Maxine. Basically, the match was abysmal, and Cole seemingly just had enough of it, so he basically just started groaning all the way through. He even took a call from his mother during the broadcast to fill the dead air. <sighs> Woof. The worst thing was, though, is that this match was not really that much worse than a regular sort of dark match tryout, but because of Cole's assassination of them on the mic, it was hilarious, but you were kind of watching their gravestones being etched out word by word. It didn't bode well for either of them. Number four, Zack Ryder's bad karma. Poor Zack Ryder. I mean, he serves as a cautionary tale now, doesn't he? It's like, if you want to get over by yourself, don't, because the WWE will stamp on you hard. He was cucked by his best friend, who lest not we forget didn't turn heel, and was basically bullied for weeks after by Kane. The attacks left Zack wheelchair bound, but Kane wasn't done with him and came back for one last shove. I don't, don't mean push, I mean shove straight off of the ramp onto the floor below. There is no way that this spot wouldn't have absolutely wrecked, and it seemed incredibly spiteful upon re-watching it. Yes, the WWE would like to make you think of this as a rib, but it was, it was utterly spiteful. However, as an image, it is also really f***ing hilarious seeing some frosted tip dudes sail off like the ending of E.T., only for it to end in the exact same way that E.T. should have f***ing ended, with him crashing to the ground and really hurting himself. I mean, I had a laugh. However, the message behind this angle was not nice. Not nice at all. Number three, the genesis of McGillicuddy. I mean, the name Michael McGillicuddy just inspires laughter, doesn't it? It sounds like a, a Boy Scout name, not a bruiser, which probably explains why Vince loves him so much, or at least let him try for so bloody long. 
However, the boy who would one day become the actually now quite brilliant B-team player was off to a bad start the moment he opened his mouth, stating that this was his moment. Fr from this moment on, he just bumbled about the mic and everyone laughed and cried in equal measure, remembering how much better his dad was with each garbled second. With behind the scenes information, this becomes even more cringeworthy and hilarious because he pitched this to Vince as being his version of Austin 316. But all it really was, was his version of Michael McGillicuddy, aka a pale imitation of something more, well, something more perfect. That being said, I like his new role. Number two, could it be? Oh my. Now this one's actually kind of sad when you think about it, because the Attitude Era, if you ask most wrestling fans, is their favourite period of wrestling. It had the anger, it had the attitude, it had the violence, it had the possible sexual harassment stuff going on. But we're not focusing on any of that. We're focusing on the fact that there were a lot of memorable stars made during this era, and they were wheeled out occasionally on Raw and SmackDown, with varying results. And at the bottom is probably Grandmaster Sexay, Brian Christopher, because when he arrived for his cameo on Raw in 2011, it was about as quiet as Byron Saxton merch sales. It was just one of those moments where you just laugh through your hands at how awkward it was. This man was part of Too Cool, easily one of the best tag groups for the time in terms of presentation value, and yet here we are with no one making a sound as he danced his way to the ring and then seemingly tried to overcompensate by laughing way too hard at his own jokes. Yeah, buddy, I know the feeling. And number one, Lex Luger super brawls with his t-shirt. Lex Luger, or Lex Luther as I always keep calling him. Sorry, I've spent way too much time over on the comic book channel there. I, I, I genuinely didn't mean to say it like that. He didn't really get to ride off into the sunset of wrestling. He was more of a fade to black with his career. And you know which moment I'm gonna talk about? It's the moment that's been circulating YouTube for quite a while. It's him trying to cut a promo while battling with a t-shirt. With this ill-fitting t-shirt and acting that would make porn actors look like Lawrence f***ing Olivier, Luger delivered probably one of the worst moments in wrestling. He couldn't get the t-shirt off, he botched his lines, and he forgot what show he was on. And yet he tried so hard to make the promo work just through sheer energy that unfortunately, it just made it all the funnier when it collapsed. And there we go, those were seven wrestling moments that you felt totally guilting for laughing at. Thank you very much for watching, but before you go, maybe you'd like to check out something else I've been working on over on the gaming channel with 10 video games that kill you within the first 10 seconds. Or maybe you'd like to check out something over on That Film Theory, where I basically look at the masculinity of Predator, the film Predator, not masculine predators, that'd be a weird one, and the significance of how he kills all of his prey. Anyway, as always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!